Hello and welcome to Business 360. I'm Arundhati Ramanan and here are the top headlines that we're tracking for you this evening. Sensex and Nifty slide for the eighth straight day as selling pressure continues. Investor wealth to the tune of 25 lakh crore rupees wiped out in 2023 so far. This is the biggest ever drop in market cap in the first two months of the year. Adani Group stocks regain some lost ground. Market capitalization rises by 30,000 crore rupees, marking the best day in the last three weeks. Shares of Vedanta declined for the eighth straight session as dollar bonds lose value and debt concerns mount. Vedanta spokesperson says there is no question of default, claims the company is in a comfortable position to meet its April and first quarter maturities. Onion farmers in Maharashtra take to the streets and halt the auction in Nashik after prices dropped to its lowest level in four years. Opposition MLAs wearing onion garlands protest at the Maharashtra Assembly. Union government promised us to procure onions and sell across India to maintain uniformity of prices. GSC Authority issues notices to around 100 brokers and intermediaries for allegedly issuing fake invoices to 26 private life insurance companies, seeks evidence of services rendered and information on transactions. That's an exclusive. Ukrainian president claims the military situation in and around the town of Bakhmut is becoming increasingly difficult. The US accuses China of being anything but an honest broker in efforts to bring peace to Ukraine. Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates meets RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das in Mumbai. Both discuss financial inclusion, payment systems, microfinance and digital lending, among other subjects. 11th graders from a Chennai school develop a machine learning program that helps decode non-verbal cues for children with autism. We catch up with the young programmers behind the innovation. We will come to all of that and more in just a little bit, but first to the markets which close in the red for the eighth straight session. Investor wealth to the tune of 25 lakh crore rupees wiped out in 2023 so far. This is the biggest ever drop in market cap in the first two months of the year. Prashant Nair is here with more action from Dalal Street. Prashant? Another down day for the markets. And uh, eight days in a row, the market has ended in the red. There's got to be some uh, a record of sorts. Uh, and, you know, yesterday's low went. Uh, one was hoping that would hold, but we made a new low today. There were attempts at a bounce, especially in the last hour and a half or so, uh, but they were mostly sold into. Like yesterday, banks did well. I mean, the bank index was up 1% yesterday. It was in the red, but uh, a vast improvement over what the Nifty was able to do. And uh, the other silver lining was the broader markets. Mid-cap and small-cap indices ended about half a percent and three-quarters of a percent in the green. Uh, and I'll get to stocks there in a bit from now. Now, the Adani pack had a bit of a reversal on the upside. And it, that's important to mention because they've been falling uh, like nine pins for some time now. So Adani Enterprises, Adani Ports, Adani Wilmar, Adani Green, Adani Power were the top gainers in that basket. There were losers there as well, uh, which we can talk about later. But I mean, there was more up than down. And uh, it's not been that way for some time now. Uh, in the broader market, I think uh, there were lots of gainers, and I'll stick with that. So Z was a big gainer, a big reversal from yesterday's loss. Triveni Turbine went up sharply. Escorts bounced off an important trend line we highlighted in the morning. JSW Energy, Uflex, Bank of India, Phoenix Milks, uh, LG Equipment, Berger Paints, Medanta, Lal Path Labs, and so many others. And I'm only highlighting things which went up with solid volumes, uh, so you can imagine the list was longer. Broader losses coming through in news-related names. So Vedanta saw a sharp cut, and we've been highlighting reasons why. Paytm lost quite a bit. Sipla was under pressure. Tata Alexi and APL Apollo were some of the others which came under pressure. As I said, the Nifty broke yesterday's low. The fresh low today was 17.255 on the Nifty. It's also closed below the 200-day moving average, which I think is important to note. From a global arena, equity stability is important, but I think what markets will also watch is cap on gains as far as the dollar index is concerned. Uh, it fell from the 105 plus levels to 104.6, and I think if it remains here or drifts lower, that should provide some catalyst for perhaps a bit of a bounce after so many days of continuous fall. Back to you.
Absolutely. Another weekday for the markets there. Thank you so much for those details, Prashant. And as he was mentioning, some respite for Adani stocks as the group gained market capitalization after nearly three weeks. Adani Total and Adani Transmission were the only two of the 10 group stocks that ended the day in the red. The Adani stocks gained a market capitalization of close to 30,000 crore rupees today. However, since the Hindenburg report was released on January 24th, the stocks have lost market capitalization of a little over 12 lakh crore rupees. And as things stand, the market capitalization of the Adani Group is back above 7 lakh crore rupees. Vivek Iyer is here with all of those details. Vivek, some respite there for Adani Group stocks? Well, absolutely right. You know, the Adani Group stocks, all of them have recovered sharply intraday. And actually what's happening is, you know, the Adani Group management has uh, organized investor roadshows. Uh, you know, and this has been done in, uh, you know, both Hong Kong as well as Singapore. All throughout the week, they're meeting investors and they're assuaging all of the concerns, especially regarding leverage as well as the bond payments that are up for due. So now, you know, what the company officials have said, and this is as per newspaper reports, uh, company officials say that, you know, the group isn't looking to refinance debt at this point of time or inject fresh capital into the business in fact what they've done is they've updated you know all of the investors in depth about the earnings profile as well as the debt profile they've also gone ahead and you know highlighted the list of uh, bond prepayments that they've done and the list of bond premiums that they intend to do in the coming months on the back of that you know today if you're looking at the stocks of uh, adani enterprises first we'll have to look at the fno names adani enterprises has you know recovered almost in 20 percent on an intraday basis and it has managed to snap a seven-day losing streak adani ports are up 7%. There's been a clear outperformer up for the fourth straight session. And when you're talking about Abuja and ACC, both are up you know, almost 5% on an intraday basis. On the other hand, you know, when you're talking about the cash stock, some of the pain persists here. Adani transmission after a brief intraday spike, you know, once again down at the lower circuit. And uh, when you're talking about this particular name, 14 straight lower circuits is what this name has seen. Adani Green today is in the green, but uh, you know, it's managed to snap a strip Six tail lo losing streak as well. Adani Total Gas, you know, the pain is very clear out here. 23 straight lower circuits for this particular name. Adani Wilmar, NDTV, as well as Adani Pa, all of them today have managed to recover. Right, Vivek. Many thanks for all those details. Now, shares of Vedanta declined for the eighth straight session. The company's overseas bondholders have been jittery for the last few days over debt repayment and the bonds have been losing value. As the debt concerns mount, Vedanta spokesperson said there is no question of default. Nigel D'Souza is here with all of those details. Nigel? Well, the Vedanta Limited stock is under pressure as the street fears the default of the promoter Vedanta Resources End. Now, the long-term debt maturities for the next few years are little more than $7 billion. In the first half of next fiscal, there are maturities amounting to around $900 million, which are due. And since there is fear of default, the bond prices have been falling, which has an inverse relation with yields. And the promoter entity holds stake in both Vedanta as well as Hindustan Singh, and rather large ones. The problem is that most of those shares are pledged. So the fear is that these pledged shares could possibly hit the market. Now, the trouble started mounting when Hindustan Zinc's plan to buy out Vedanta's international zinc assets hit a roadblock. This has the government of India opposed the transaction. Keep in mind, the government of India had roughly around 30% stake in Hindustan Zinc, and they also have board representation. Now, the proposed transaction was that Vedanta would sell its international zinc assets to Hindustan Zinc for nearly around $3 billion. That would mean the deal would be done at 10 times EV per bitter which is very, very expensive for a metal company. The other problem is it would drain Hindustan Zinc of all its cash in its books. The big question is, is Vedanta Resources able to wriggle out of this? The answer could probably be yes, because they could use their credit lines with banks to refinance the debt in the near term. They could also approach the government of India and look at reworking this entire international zinc deal. The government, remember, had asked them to explore other cashless methods for the acquisition of the assets and maybe possibly as well, Hindustan Zinc goes ahead and simply pays out a large dividend. That flows to Vedanta Resources via Vedanta Limited. Valuation-wise, well, the Vedanta stock is attractively priced at around three and a half times ZV per a bitter. We reached out to the Vedanta spokesperson and the reply was to CNBC TV in Square that they are in a comfortable position to meet the near-term maturities, adding that there is no question of default and except around 6.8% Hindustan Zinc shares other holdings are not pledged, so there is no risk of any further selling of shares. 
All right, Nigel, many thanks for all those details. Now, Maiden Pharma's two executives have been sentenced to two and a half years in jail for exporting substandard drugs to Vietnam. According to a Reuters report, a court in Haryana's Sonipat has ordered imprisonment for Maiden Pharma's co-founder, Naresh Kumar Goel, and its technical director, M.K. Sharma, for sending heat burn medicine not of standard quality to Vietnam in 2014. Now, this verdict comes few months after WHO linked their cough syrups to deaths of children in Gambia. Meanwhile, CIPLA fell close to 5% of the U.S. drug regulator issued eight observations to its Pitampur facility. These observations will most likely push back the launch of its key respiratory drug, Adver. Ekta Batra is here with what this means for the company. Ekta? Well, yes, supply is in focus in today's trading session simply because we have managed to access the Form 483, which contains the eight observations which were issued to the company's indoor facility, which was inspected from the 6th of Feb to the 17th of Feb. Now, why exactly is this important is because the nature of the observations can now be assessed. And while there are no data integrity observations, according to the analysts, the observations still continue to be complex. So what that means is that this is probably going to take a longer time frame to resolve. There could be a likelihood of a reinspection by the US drug regulators and the analysts have not ruled out an escalation to an official action indicated status, which means that current approvals from this particular facility could be impacted. Now, why exactly is that important is because one of the key drugs is filed from this particular facility, which is Adve Generic, an inhaler, which is expected to be launched by Q1 of FI24. If in case there is an adverse reaction by the regulator on this particular plant, then this particular uh, you know, uh, drug in question, Adve Generic, could then get delayed in terms of a launch for CIPLA and is estimated to be around 5% of their FI24 as well as FI25 EPS. Separately, this particular plant is any which way important for CIPLA. It does manufacture oral solids as well as uh, inhalers and is around 20% of their FI23 estimated EBITDA. So the street will wait and watch what the next steps would be from the company in terms of replying to the US FDA remediation of the particular facility as well as the US FDA's action going forward. So some regulatory action there for CIPLA. Thank you so much for those details, Ekta. Now moving on, the Director General of GST Intelligence has sent notices to around 100 insurance brokers and intermediaries for allegedly issuing fake invoices to 26 private life insurers. Timsey Jeparia joins us now with those details. Timsey, what are your sources telling you? Well, that's right. What we are given to understand from sources is that, that the Director General of GST Intelligence has sent notices to insurance brokers and intermediaries on dealings with insurers. They were dealing with 26 private life insurers and the, the allegation that DGGI is making against these intermediaries and brokers is that they have issued fake invoices to these life insurers. There are about 100 such insurance brokers and intermediaries who have received such notices where DGGI has sought information on transactions with insurers, especially noting that internal, uh, internal investigation has shown that uh, these brokers and intermediaries have actually issued fake invoices because of the commission that they have received, which is much above than the limit that has been set by IRDAI. Thus, DGGI now wants evidence of services rendered to these insurers. Bangalore, Mumbai and Ghaziabad units have sent notices and summons. So let's see how soon these insurer brokers and uh, intermediaries actually respond to DGGI. What is it that the finally is there in store for these insurance uh, brokers and intermediaries and thus having a ripple effect on 26 private live insurers. Back to you. Right, Timsi. Many thanks for all those details. On that note, it is time for us to head into a short break. But coming up next, Indian Airlines are facing a with us on Business 360. At a time when India's air travel demand is surging, Indian Airlines are facing a shortage of aircraft. Six Indian Airlines together have 108 aircraft on ground due to supply chain issues and non-availability of engine spares. Going by the available numbers, GoFirst and SpiceJet have the highest number of planes that are not fit to fly. Madhya Mujawar joins us now with a breakup of these numbers. Madhya, give us some perspective on where things stand at this point. Well, the six airlines that we're talking about here are Air India, Air India Express, Indigo, Spicejet, Go First, and Vistara. Although these airlines have not provided a number of their grounded aircraft, according to a fleet tracking site, 
these six airlines together have 108 aircraft as you mentioned that are not in service which means they are parked at the tarmac and are awaiting fit to fly clearance now spicejet and go first each have 39 percent of their fleet which is the highest number of fleet among all airlines on ground spicejet has 74 planes of which 29 are parked go first has 23 of the 59 planes on ground Indigo, the largest airline currently, has 40 of its planes that are not in service, which is 13% of its total fleet. And many of Indigo's planes have been parked for a long time. Air India has 113 aircraft in total, of which 13, that is 11% of its fleet, is on ground. We reached out to these airlines asking for reasons why their planes are parked. Most of them have blamed supply chain issues and non-availability of engine spares. Indigo says supply of refreshed engines is slower than expected. Now, while Spicejet also blamed uh, spares shortage, the airline says some of the parked aircraft are re-delivered to lessors but are pending deregistration. All right, Madhya, many thanks for those details. Now, moving on, um, moving on, a quick look at some of the other headlines that we're tracking for you. Onion farmers in Maharashtra take to the streets and halt the auction in Nashik after prices dropped to its lowest level in four years. Opposition MLAs wearing onion garlands protest at the Maharashtra Assembly. Union government promises to procure onions and sell across India to maintain uniformity of prices. So far, we have not seen any technological breakthrough in the storage of onion. And therefore, the storage of onion continues to be uh, not based on very highly scientific lines. So you have to ask, why is it that we have not been able to develop a proper storage system for onion? The Union Health Ministry has issued its first heat wave advisory today. The list suggests avoiding cooking during peak hours. The Indian Meteorological Department has further suggested avoiding consumption of some beverages like alcohol, tea, coffee and carbonated soft drinks. This comes as parts uh, across the country, including Northwest India, Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat, continue to face temperatures above 2 to 3 degrees Celsius than the normal range. Ukrainian president claims that the military situation in and around the town of Bakhmut is becoming increasingly difficult. The US accuses China of being anything but an honest broker in efforts to bring peace to Ukraine. Pro-Russia Belarusian president is in China on a three-day visit. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Blinken is due to meet leaders of five former Soviet nations in Kazakhstan. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has signed a deal with the European Union on post-Brexit trading arrangements for Northern Ireland. Sunak has hailed the arrangement as a decisive breakthrough. The Democratic Unionist Party, whose support is crucial to restore power sharing in Northern Ireland, has said they will take some time to come to a collective decision on the New Deal. Amid all the discourse surrounding chatbots, AI platforms and automation in general, a group of school children in Chennai have built a machine learning tool to help children with autism communicate better. CNBC TV 18's Jude Sanit meets the team of the four behind the innovation. Take a look. At first glance, you'd think these kids were attending a routine computer science class. But Guha, Kamlesh, Jayesh and Avnish, 11th grade students of DAV Boys School in Chennai, are actually busy improving on a software platform they developed earlier this year. A software that helps autistic children understand facial expressions. All it took was a laptop, some scratch code and time spent training a computer to understand the link between words and human emotion. Children with autism face difficulties when it comes to social interaction and communication thanks to a series of repeated thought and behavioural patterns on account of a neurodevelopmental condition. Typically, these children have difficulty while performing tasks considered simple by many, like reading facial expressions. Now that's where Avnish, Jayesh, Guha and Kamlesh's ideas enter the picture. They decided to teach a machine learning program how to read facial expressions, which could then in turn help an autistic child cope with deciphering these non-verbal cues. The idea stems from a simple yet crucial concept. Initially, we created these five labels, five emotions, and then we went about forming prominent examples for these. For example, I really like the rain today. It is an expression of happy. So we put that under happy, so the machine clearly knows that if a person enters the sentence, 
it'll categorize it as the happy and uh, help the autistic person express that emotion. Over time, they kept categorizing new sentences under emotions like happy, anxious, sad and more while training the machine to understand them and emote accordingly. Huge tech giants, when they make machine learning programs, they actually feed, feed, the, feed their program of billions of data. But due to a time crunch, we didn't have that much of time to like feed it that much data. We only were able to feed it like um, 200 or 300 sentences. The idea, they say, came from a 21-day project overseen by Chennai-based EduTech platform Crew. The startup believes that with 2.2 lakh students on its platform, the possibilities for more such innovation are endless. I couldn't be more thrilled that these are students who are 14 or 15 years old who without being told what empathy is and without being told what it means to work for the sake of other children have done it automatically and technology has made this possible. Back at school, these boys are far from done. They're now working on a Python version of their machine learning tool, which means greater accuracy and the capability to input, collate and process a lot more data quicker. For Guha, Kamlesh, Jayesh and Avnish, the project and its success has not automatically meant that they are actively looking at becoming tech founders. For them, it's still about using this technology to reach children who need it. In Chennai, Jude Sanath. And with that, it is a wrap on this edition of Business 360. Many thanks for watching, but stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. More news and updates continue on the other side.